Hey everybody, good morning. Um, yeah, so this video will be pretty simple and straightforward, and basically the inspiration for this video was the fact that I had just seen more and more uh, graphs popping up, and the data just seems to really be pointing at one thing. And what I really want to drive home is that all the predictions that I make are based on data. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that I do are extrapolations, but I always return to the data. So if you've got the data, trust the data, then you can tell a story on top of it. So let's dive in. So this uh, video will be 11 charts, you probably saw this from the title, um, that just basically show where we're at on this exponential. So the first one is pretty exciting, which is AI scores on humanity's last exam, which is another benchmark. Um, one thing that's kind of a joke out there in the, in the uh, AI space right now, if you haven't heard, is basically we're saturating all the benchmarks this year. So every time a benchmark gets saturated, people need to make a new benchmark. So like the ARC AGI test was more or less solved. And so since then it's like, well, the ARC AGI test wasn't actually that good of a test of AGI because it's now been solved and we don't have AGI or whatever. Anyways, point being though, is that this graph goes back to April of 2024. So less than a year ago when models were scoring 5% and now OpenAI Deep Research scores more than 25%. So you, you extrapolate this out and it's like, okay, this will be solved within a year. Uh, okay. So is that, is that really the last exam? So that's, that's graph one. The next one is, um, this is another version of the one that I've been posting, which is about, uh, the, the performance on the GPQA. So that's Google proof question and answering diamond. It's a mouthful. I would probably name it something else, but anyways, you see a very clear trend here. This this graph goes back to 2023, um, and this came. This was uh, published by Epoch AI. A lot of these graphs are, are published by Epoch AI, so go check them out. They're super useful, interesting uh, resource for for AI data. Anyways, so random guessing here was is 25 percent. So if you, I guess the it, you know if you have four choices and you're just randomly picking then you're going to expect to get 25% accuracy. So back in July, 2023, you know, GPT-4, Claude 2, you know, then it, you see a very clear trend up, but then you get to the point of just over 70% accuracy. And that's a human expert level on, a, on any given domain. So then it's like, okay, well, this is just January, 2025, what if this trend continues for any length of time? Then basically every model within a year or two is going to be superhuman in terms of above human expert level at any given task. And here's here's one thing that really kind of bugs me is that some people are like, yeah, but AI isn't better than me at one task. Yeah, but it's going to be better than you at that one task before too long. And it's also getting better at all tasks. <laughs> at all times. Because remember, these are all individual models that are better at math, better at, you know, expert level domain stuff and coding and everything else. So anyways, moving on. The next one is, this is actually an older one. This actually came out uh, from ARK Invest um, in January 2024. So this is old. Um, but either I hadn't seen it or I had forgotten that I had seen it. Anyways, it popped back up. And what this chart does this isn't a chart showing um, when AGI is coming. This is a chart showing at how bad humans are at estimating when AGI is coming. Because back in 2020, they, the experts said AGI was 50 years away. And then a year later, they said it was 34 years away. And then another year later, it was 18 years away. And then another year later, it was eight years away. So basically what you're actually measuring here is how wrong the experts are. And so now we're saying like, okay, we're going to converge on AGI being here roughly 2026, 2027, which is about where everyone has consolidated. So they were right a year in advance. Now, I would argue that we already have a general purpose, general intelligence. Um, but, you know, at a certain point, it's, it's semantics. The point is, is that AI uh, is rapidly exponentially rising. And the margin of error that experts have is exponentially decaying. Or rather, uh, there's a... How am I trying to say that? Anyways, you get the idea. Is that uh, the experts have been wrong and we're, 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 
closing asymptotically on uh, where where the actual prediction is. Um, so when when all the human experts are this wrong, this is another reason why I'm really skeptical of the AI safety narratives. It's like the experts can't predict more than a couple years in advance, yet some people say, I know exactly how AI is going to behave 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. No, that's not how, that's, you, nobody is that smart. Nobody has that, that level of, of powers of prediction. Um, and also their, large, their logic is not that good. All right, so then this chart was one of the first ones that came across my, my desk and made me realize like, okay, the exponentials are, are not just here, but accelerating. So this is all 03. So the um the or sorry the the last gray bar is is 03. So that's OpenAI's 03 and all these other models over time were were you know clearly growing going up. And so you have Frontier Math, ArcAGI, Software Engineering Bench, GPQA and the AIM 2024. So a bunch of these are are uh, let's see two of these are math. One is software engineering, and then Google question answering, and then the ARC AGI reasoning. So you say, okay, well, this one model did all that. And that was a jump from, you know, some of these, they were down here piddly doing almost nothing, and then it jumps up. So what if this continues? Like, again, this is one model does all these different things. And this is before they even announced deep research, by the way, is when this, this uh, graph came out. So it's all going to continue. Um, this was another one that, that just came out that's really, really interesting. Um, so this is human performance. So human performance is indexed at zero. And this, this graph goes back a little bit further. And what, what this shows is just how quickly problems went from not being really even addressed by machine learning to solved. So in this case, basic level reading comprehension went from not really being addressed at all by machine learning to solved in a couple years. So when I say solved, what, what I mean by that is that the, the model is performing as good as can be expected or uh, at or above human level. And so you see this is happening faster and faster where, you know, OCR and stuff, that took a while to, to get saturated. That took, you know, 15 plus years to get to, to get to the point of saturating benchmarks. But now PhD level science questions happened in less than a year. Competitive level mathematics happened in about three years. Um, multitask language understanding happened in about three years. So the timelines are shortening. And when timelines are shortening, that means acceleration is accelerating. Um, because it's like, okay, it's not just a matter of we got a new task that is going to still take 10 or 15 years to saturate. It's we had a new problem, we, we identified a new class of problems, and it's saturated in less than three years, often less than one or two years. That is what I mean by acceleration is accelerating. All right, real quick, I want to remind everyone that I have um, all of my links uh, nice, and, nice and organized on my link tree. Link is in the description. Um, I'm on Substack over here, so I write, I repost videos there. Um, I have over 100 articles on Substack, so if you need more, and by the way, the Substack app will also read the articles to you, so you basically have a podcast. Speaking of, I do also have a podcast on Spotify. Um, and then I've got my learning community, which is growing. I add about two, one, two, or three new lessons per, uh, per week right now. I've also got a whole bunch of other YouTube channels and a bunch of other stuff out there. So anyways, uh, back to the show. Now this, uh, this graph is one that I have used a while, uh, for, for a while, um, but it continues to be relevant. And this is another one from Epoch AI where they talk about um, the slow uh, rise of neural networks. Um, and then we get to the deep learning era. And so you see that not only were things, and this is a logarithmic graph, by, by the way. So, you know, uh, 1 E2, 1 E8, 14, 20, 26. So straight lines on an exponential graph, and then the straight line on another exponential graph accelerates even, four, even further. So you get 4.6x per year. And before that, we were only at 1.5x per year. So the acceleration in, since, in, since the beginning of the deep learning era the acceleration has accelerated by 3x because we went from 1.5 to 4.6.
and it's not really showing any signs of slowing down. In fact, if you look at this cluster right at the end, it almost looks like it's even accelerating further because you have far fewer models below that line of distribution up here. So just notice that really dense concentration above the line. So this is probably even, even underestimating the rate of acceleration right now. Next one, and this one was also really interesting, another one from Epoch AI, which is just looking at the number of models above 10 to the 23rd flops. So this is, when, when, you, when you look at this, this is how much training, how much compute was put into the training of the model. And so it's not going up exponentially. Uh, well, actually, maybe, maybe it is, because it, it's growing pretty fast. It almost looks like it might be geometric. We'll see by the end of this, but certainly this growth curve is very fast. Um, so the, there's one, one early uh, adopter back here in 2017, but then it's really taking off and it's not really showing any signs of slowing down. So, you know, we're, we're going to have a world that is completely saturated with both, both open and closed source models that are trained at the scale of GPT-4 and above. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty important to keep in mind. Um, let's see, machine learning hardware. So this one is interesting. Um, this one, again, see how fast this scale goes up? So uh, this is teraflops. So f uh, performance at floating point 32 in terms of teraflops per second. And so it started at one. And so these are some, some nice older GPUs. So you had like the NVIDIA Quadra, the Quadra, the GTX 280. So that's pretty old. Then you started having the NVIDIA Tesla. Do you remember the Tesla? A100. But this scale goes up very, very quickly. So again, a straight line on this scale is like hyperbolic. It goes up very, very quickly. And again, you see also at the end of this, there's a higher concentration of models, or uh, sorry, hardware um, above the distribution. There's still a few below. There's some way, way far below. But, uh, you know, Meta has entered, entered the competition. But at the same time, it almost looks like you could make an argument that if you were to... Uh, forecast this out, there's probably a little bit of an acceleration curve that this linear regression on an exponential graph is not capturing. So the hardware is also still accelerating. And the underlying hardware is the primary bottleneck to the, the growth in parameter count. So if the hardware is also accelerating, then there's not really any barrier of acceleration for the models riding on top of those hardwares. So that's really important to keep in mind. Um, this one I thought was also really interesting. Uh, it took me a minute to really kind of understand what they're talking about. So cumulative number of systems. So notable machine learning systems in our database by domain and year of release. So basically what this is showing is that in terms of all the various kinds of AI that are out there, we are growing exponentially. And this goes back even further from 1950. So in terms of machine learning, AI, neural networks, all kinds of things. So there are more and more applications or, or number of systems that are available. You see vision started a long time ago and has been slowly ramping up. Um, other, I'm not sure what other is because that's, you know, you've got language, multimodal, other, vision, games and those sorts of things. What's really interesting is that the number of new AI systems or machine learning systems in games almost looks like it has plateaued. And I wonder if that's going to change, particularly with NVIDIA, all the work that they're doing on like the neural rendering and, um, and Gaussian splats and those sorts of things. Um, I suspect that we're going to see a huge jump here, but really where we've seen the most growth is language models. So you see this one is proliferating. And then, of course, multimodal models are a brand new one. So what if multimodal models grow as fast as the rest of these? So we are very much in an age of exponentials right now. Uh, next up is the benchmark accuracy increases with training compute. And you see <laughs> DeepSeq R1 just broke it over here. So this is the math level 5 accuracy. So DeepSeq R1 did a really good job. This graph, I think, came out before 03. Um, and it looks like even... Let's see, I'm wondering why I'm not seeing O1 one unless I'm missing it, GPT-4. So that might have been, um, I'm not sure why O1 one and O3 are not represented on this graph. They're probably doing really well. It might have been that they didn't have the data because DeepSeq R1 is open source, so they could test it on their own. That's another thing that um, Epoch AI is starting to do is they're doing more of their own in-house testing. They had this little announcement. So um, anyways, uh, 
when you see something like this, it's like, okay, math is basically solved. Um, if not now, then by the end of the year, then, you know, everyone and their brother is going to have an AI model that has solved math. And it's really important to remember how central math is to literally all other science, uh, whether it's cryptography, whether it's computer science, whether it's physics, math underpins everything. Uh, and so when you have AI that solves math, guess what AI is? AI is also math. So then once you have AI that has solved math, you have AI that has also, and, and computer science and coding, math and computer science and coding, you have an AI model that solves that, you have an AI model that has solved AI. So that's why I'm talking like, I, I did a poll and basically you, you guys are predicting that fully automatic, or sorry, fully automated recursive self-improvement is coming 2026. Um, I tend to agree with you guys there. This, this is what that means. Um, and then this, this is the last one that just popped up. Someone went to uh, Google Trends and you look at the, the last five years of AI agents and sorry, this graph is super smushed. I had to like fit it onto the screen. Anyways, um, AI agents are just taking off exponentially. So everything is going exponential. Everything is going vertical right now. It's not just one graph. It's literally all graphs <laughs> dealing with AI are going exponential and vertical right now. So Thanks for watching. I hope this gave you some more confidence and some more ammo as you talk about what's going on. This is happening. There are no bottlenecks. I, every time in the past when I said like, we're gonna have a bottleneck of compute, we're gonna have a bottleneck of money, or we're gonna have algorithmic bottlenecks. None of those have withstood the test of time. So I was wrong in that, and I'm actually glad I was wrong because this is the more interesting timeline, and it also means we're gonna solve big problems sooner. All right. Have a good one. Cheers.